Before I do start this video, make sure to use my TCG player affiliate down below if you're looking for any of these singles that I talk about today. Also, this channel is sponsored by Arcane Fortress. If you're looking for the best deck boxes around, make sure to use my link down below in the description to check them out. One other way you can support the channel is by becoming a patron. There are some great benefits of being a patron to the channel, such as giveaways, deck advice, and more when you do join. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pub Stomp MTG, and with Bloomboro coming to Magic the Gathering, there is one kitty cat that is absolutely scary. And the card I am referring to is Ygra, Eater of All. So let's first read what it does before going into the video. So for three black and a green, it's a Golgari Commander, Elemental Cat, with a 6-6 six, six body. It does have Ward Sacrifice of Food. Other creatures are food artifacts in addition to their other types and have Pay 2 and Tap Sacrifice as permanent, you gain 3 life. And whenever a food is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put 2 1-1 one, one counters on Ygra, Eater of All. So this is a pretty sweet commander. This focuses on having all creatures turn into food artifacts. Of course, Ygra is going to just devour everything on the battlefield and when those creatures do die it's just going to get bigger and bigger over time and in a weird way this does remind me of Sorolf in the fact that you're putting one encounters on Sorolf specifically and it just grows exponentially off of something going to the graveyard so there's a lot to discuss with this commander what I like most about it is the fact that of course there's a lot of abusable ways where we could just take advantage of its ability every creature on the battlefield is going to be an artifact too so with all that said now let's go into the deck let's talk about some of the cards that you should definitely add because there's a lot of cool ones and a lot of cool synergies that you can take advantage of with Ygra. So without further ado, let's get it started. So let's first talk about food because of course Ygra is a foodie by nature. So let's first focus on some cards that will give us some food options. For example, Greta Sweet Tooth Scourge is a great option in the deck. It enters with a food token and it can act as a sacrifice outlet putting a 1-1 counter on target creature or we could pay 2 mana to sacrifice a food, you draw a card and you lose 1 life. This is just a great engine just to buff up our creatures and get some card draw if needed. Another engine in itself is Nuka Cola Vending Machine. This is absolutely perfect in the deck because when we're sacrificing foods, we're going to be creating tap treasure tokens also because all our creatures are foods if we do sacrifice them one way or another we're just going to be making tap treasure tokens so this is an excellent choice in the deck too of course what it takes to make food is farmer so why not add bristle bud farmer this does have trample and when it enters the battlefield you create two food tokens also when it does attack you may sacrifice a food if you do you mill three cards you may put a permanent card from among them into your hand this is just a great way where every turn we do attack with bristle bud farmer we can get some value by getting a permanent card into our hand by cards that we did mill and on top of that it's just a sacrifice outlet i mean kind of a sacrifice outlet it's going to be every combat you're going to be sacrificing a food whether it's a token or a creature you do have on the battlefield another great engine in the deck that i do want to highlight is rapacious guest the biggest reason why i do like this is the fact that whenever one of our creatures you control deal combat damage to a player create a food token plus whenever you sacrifice a food you put a plus one plus one counter on rapacious guest very similar to our commander and there is a little bit of one one counter synergy so this could get extra huge and when it does leave the battlefield though, target opponent loses life equal to its power. This is doing everything we want. We want to have food tokens on the battlefield to sacrifice to make our commander bigger and it'll also get bigger itself and then we can even sacrifice it because it's going to be a food. We can pay two and tap it, sacrifice it, and you gain three life but your opponent's going to lose a lot of life depending on how big it is. Other food generators from Throne of Eldraine is Savvy Hunter and Gilded Goose. Savvy Hunter can be a great card draw engine. Sacrifice two foods so whatever creature we have on the battlefield as long as we have our commander on the battlefield we could get a draw card also when it does attack or block you create a food token as well and of course gilded goose it's going to sacrifice the food to add one man of any color now all your creatures are going to be online to sacrifice basically like a phyrexian altar if you will but one card that's going to be extremely deadly in the deck is going to be cauldron familiar when it enters the battlefield each opponent loses one life and you gain one life you sacrifice a food return cauldron familiar from your graveyard to the battlefield there are a lot of ways we can make food tokens on the battlefield and our creatures are going to be foods as well so if we have some way to sacrifice cauldron familiar we're going to be draining our opponents for a lot of life and we're going to gain a lot of life too there could be a lot of different scenarios if you do have a sack outlet on the battlefield say for example you have 10 total creatures on the battlefield you sacrifice cauldron familiar return it back to the battlefield by sacrificing another creature sacrifice cauldron familiar go back and forth make everybody lose 10 life and you gain 10 life speaking of sacrifice outlets our commander is one hungry kitty so we need to make sure that we could feed it a lot to get it bigger and bigger 
There are a lot of different sack outlets I do want to take advantage of in this deck. Viscerous here is a great one. Sacrifice a creature, scry one. Clark Clan Ironworks is another great one because all our creatures are going to be artifacts in addition to their other types, so we could add two mana to our mana pool. Also, Warren Soul Trader is going to be making treasure tokens for us that we could use later on in the game. So paying one life to sacrifice a creature isn't a big deal. There are some creatures that have great effects when they do die. For example, the Kamigawa Dragons. Usually when I think about death triggers, I always think about them. But Junji and Kura are great examples of that. Junji can make people discard or also put a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield depending on which mode you choose when it does die. Kuro's die trigger is also pretty good too. You can search your library for lands and put it into your hand. Or you can make a big giant creature on the battlefield depending on how much lands you do have. Most likely you're going to want to have a lot of little creatures to sacrifice to make Ygra even bigger. But because these dragons have such amazing death triggers and we want to be sacrificing stuff with our commander so that we can make it bigger and bigger, I feel like these are going to be great options to get some extra value on top of it. But let's throw on some planeswalkers that make some great tokens and give us some great advantage. For example, Liliana Dreadhorde General and Garrick Cursed Huntsman are going to be insane options on the deck. Garrick will put two bodies on the battlefield that are 2-2s, two and when they do die, you put a loyalty counter on Garrick. He acts as removal and card draw for that minus three ability, and its minus six ability is an overrun effect, giving our creatures trample. We definitely want to give trample to our commander especially, because a lot of our creatures are going to die, including those wolves. So it's going to be very easy to get to that loyalty of six. And Liliana Dreadhorde General does not need any kind of explaining in this deck. It makes tokens on the battlefield, acts as removal, and completely annihilating your opponent's board with a minus nine ability. Oh yeah, all the while that's happening, whenever creature control dies, you draw a card. So this is an insane value engine giving you everything you want in this type of deck. And with our commander getting all sorts of counters on it, let's make sure we can double those counters by using cards like Invigorating Surge, Corpse Jack Menace, and Branching Evolution. So Invigorating Surge is just a one-time effect. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature control, then double the number of 1-1 counters on that creature. So if Yigura does have like three counters on it, you put an extra counter on it, then double those counters, so it'd be up to eight counters. And every time a creature does die on the battlefield, because they are food in addition to their other types, Corpse Jack, Menace, and Branching Evolution, instead of getting two plus one plus one counters on our commander, we're going to get four. So definitely something to consider, especially adding a lot of one one counter synergies in this deck. But now let's discuss the win cons of the deck. There's a lot of win cons. Of course, our commander is a win con in itself, mainly because if we have enough counters and we swing at somebody, we could get commander lethal damage for one player. You'll want to make sure you can get to your win cons by using cards like Verd and Revel. Whenever an artifact is put into an opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, you may draw a card. To me, this is going to give you a lot of long-term value over the game because all your opponent's creatures are going to be artifacts and all it really takes is one board wipe and you get to draw a ton of cards. But why stop there when you could draw your whole entire deck with Experimental Confectioner and Peregrine Took? A while ago, when Wilds of Eldraine came out, I made a short about this explaining the combo. So if you do want to go check that out, I'll post the link above here. But to give you a short summary, basically Peregrine Took does have that sacrifice three foods, you draw a card. And Experimental Confectioner has that ability whenever you sacrifice a food, you create a 1-1 black rat creature token with this creature can't block. So essentially you sacrifice three foods, you make three rat tokens on the battlefield. And Peregrine Took will individually focus on one rat at a time coming on the battlefield, making three food tokens on the battlefield. Plus it'll make it a little easier because Ygra Eater of All will make those rats into food tokens as well. So even if you didn't have Peregrine Took on the battlefield, if you had a sacrifice outlet on the battlefield with Experimental Confectioner and Ygra. You just constantly sacrifice a rat token because it's going to be a food in addition to its other types. So when you sacrifice a food, you're going to be making a rat token, sacrifice that rat token, go back and forth, and make Ygra exponentially large, however large you want. Another interesting way you can kind of close out the game is by making all your opponent's lands, including your own lands, into creatures. For example, Nature's Revolt and Natural Affinity. So simply, all lands are 2-2 creatures and are still lands. When you play one of these effects, then I don't know, you could cast something like a Toxic Deluge, giving minus two, minus two to all creatures on the battlefield, including all those land creatures. You will kill all your lands too, but that's a small price to pay for this. Say for example, everybody had 10 lands on the battlefield at the end of the game, and you played one of these effects to make all lands into two, two creatures, and you cast that Toxic Deluge. In total, 40 creatures that are lands died that turn, and then Yigra will become a 86-86. Again, I know that's a very strange example, but that's really what could happen in this deck. You could play Nature's Revolt, Yigra, and then kill all those lands and put them into the graveyard because our food, they're going to trigger Yigra and so it's going to be absolutely ridiculous, making it absolutely huge. Usually I would advise against land destruction, but if you have Yigra on the battlefield, you could just constantly swing at your opponents. They will probably still have creatures left on the battlefield, but you could just Toxic Deluge for however much you need to destroy all creatures on the battlefield besides Yigra and then just swing at your opponents one at a time for victory there. However, that's going to do it for me guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on Yigra Eater.
leader of all. Let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts and opinions about this commander. I think it's pretty powerful. This feels like a strict upgrade to Sarolf. It has some pretty good food synergy and it is pretty interesting in the fact that your opponents can sacrifice their own creatures to gain 3 life, all the while buffing up Yigra itself. So closing out this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and with that out of the way, thank you for stomping by.